Assalamualaikum and good evening everyone. Selamat sejahtera dan selamat datang ke Yaman Channel. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for investing your time with us on Saturday night bersama saya Farzana Izani and I am your moderator for tonight. Before I begin, I would like to inform that this talk will be in mixed languages which are Bahasa Melayu and and Bahasa Inggeris. Jadi kita boleh capai ke uh, target audience yang lagi besar. And I do too would like to share with you on what your mind is. Your mind is a, a social enterprise that helping youth with symptoms or disorders in mental health to get the necessary help to save them from getting worse. Following that, Young Minds' vision is to break the stigma among Malaysians so that those who suffer can help can ask for help without fear of community evaluation. Jadi di sini jika ada penonton yang ingin mendapatkan bantuan dari segi kesehatan mental, sila layari social media Young Minds Malaysia at My Young Minds atau hantarkan email anda kepada kami. Also, jadi bersama saya hari ini pada malam ini, we have two amazing speakers yang akan kongsikan tentang art therapy, the coping mechanism, the coping mechanism, the effects and others. Alright, with us, the first speaker that we have here is a very talented and efficient man, Professor Madia Muhammad Mazan Musa, graduated from social psychology, major in United uh, I'm sorry, graduated from social psychology major in United States International University, San Diego, California. And he is now serves as a senior lecturer, senior lecturer, I'm sorry, he now serves as senior lecturer of social psychology and art therapy, program counseling, program counseling, uh, dan psychology, pusat pengajar psikologi gunaan, Dasar dan kerja sosial di UC Utara Malaysia, Sintok Kedah. Malaysian Expressive Arts Therapy Association since 2012. He is also an Expressive Arts Therapy Consultant from Trauma Informed Practices and Expressive Arts Therapy Institute, United States. How are you, Prof? I'm doing good, Alhamdulillah, and uh, I would like to uh, to say my appreciation. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Thank you for having me, and uh, I'm glad that we can meet tonight. I think, uh, to be very honest, this is my first time using Zoom. You know, previously I used uh. Webex. We use a lot of Webex, but anyway, it's going to be quite an experience for tonight. A uh, nice meeting everyone online, and also uh, who are following this particular program for tonight. Okay, hopefully we'll have a Uh, wonderful time, you know, talking about art therapy and how it can help us, uh, and 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 uh, and how far does art therapy uh, can be used, you know, for mental health. Especially. Right, thank you so much, Prof. Okay. All right, thank you so much, Prof. Mazan. Now we will move on to our second speaker, a beautiful and talented local artist, Puan Faralina binti Muhammad Nur Daim. She is a full-time comic artist and a freelancer, which holds a degree in multimedia. Fon Farah really is a passionate in animation and comic film. All of her amazing artwork involves fantasy fiction, especially in Nusantara, which is also called as archipelago element. Along with that, you may as well want to check out Fon Farah's masterpiece on her Instagram at Daim Farah or her Facebook page Art of Farah Daim. How are you feeling, Puan Farah? Assalamualaikum. Thank you for having me. Um, uh, just like Prof, this is my first time also having a webinar online regarding on art therapy stuff so <laughs> uh, I've been in industry for like 10 years now and I have uh, I'm already have a little family of my own so I hope that with a little bit of what I have and experience I hope will help you guys out there so yeah 
I hope we'll have fun tonight also. Hi, uh, thank you so much, Pong Tara. Okay, baiklah. Kembali kita kepada topik malam ini ialah tentang art therapy. Setengah kajian mendapati bahawa teknik yang digunakan untuk art therapy boleh juga dijadikan sebagai therapeutic tools yang membantu untuk menangani masalah kesihatan mental. Art therapy also could help those with mental health problems to realize their potential and increase productivity using various stress coping strategies. It's important to find as they will have an adverse impact on the nation's social fabric and hope for the next generation of Malaysians. Baiklah, according to a National Health and Mobility Survey in 2015, it shows that about 4.2 million citizens Uh, beranggaran umur daripada 16 hingga ke umur 29 dan juga ke atas terdapat sebanyak 30% daripada populasi yang merana akibat kesihatan mental. Ia juga menunjukkan bahawa sehingga hari ini rakyat Malaysia masih lagi tidak terdedah dengan kelebihan art terapi yang mungkin boleh membantu mereka dari sudut kesihatan mental. Manakala, ada juga setengah pihak yang menganggap bahawa art terapi hanya untuk mereka yang berbakat dalam lukisan. Baiklah, jadi soalan pertama saya kepada Prof. Mat Zain atau juga lebih mesra dikenali sebagai Prof. Personal. Uh, soalan saya kepada Prof. Ella, in your own words Prof, what is the definition of art terapi? Ada stigma yang mengatakan bahawa art terapi hanyalah sekadar lukis atau conteng-conteng je. Dan disebabkan itu, uh, apa yang boleh Prof katakan untuk orang biasa seperti saya yang ingin tahu tentang art terapi dan hubung kaitnya dengan kesihatan mental. Jadi bolehkah Prof terangkan dengan lebih lanjut? Oh, Okey, terima kasih uh, <coughs> Prof Zana. Saya cuba untuk berkongsi maklumat sedikit ya. Okey, memandangkan uh, tajuk uh, apa ni malam ni ya, uh, mental health, art therapy and mental health. Uh, uh, sebelum saya pergi kepada ke art therapy ya, isu mental health ni tuan-tuan ya, uh, kepada semua yang mendengar pada malam ni ya, isu mental health sebenarnya adalah satu isu yang sangat uh, apa contemporary untuk kehidupan masa kini ya, especially uh, during the Uh, the new millennium, yeah? or people are more, people are much more aware of uh, mental health issues, okay? And uh, when we say about mental health, it doesn't mean you're crazy or madness, okay? In psychology, in psycho- those who are majoring in psychology uh, will, will have a better understanding of the word mental health. Mental health doesn't mean uh, it is about madness, you know, uh, or in, in, in the Malay culture, we call it kegilaan, gila, that kind of thing, right? Mental health is more than that. That is more. It's much, much, much wider than that. Uh, for instance, one of the comp- uh, one of the uh, uh, what do you call this uh, psychological issue related to mental health. Uh, it's about worry, anxiety. You know, uh, kerisauan, kebimbangan. Uh, itu adalah mental health. Okay, anger management. People who, who are unable to uh, to contain their anger. Okay, uh, uh, who, are, who are very, very abusive. Uh, in uh, verbally, yeah, okay. Those are mental health issues, okay. So when 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 we say about mental health, don't restrict ourselves to the to the concept of madness, gila, yeah. So but uh, in 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 the in the in the in, in the psychology literature, uh, they don't use the word. Uh, sane or insane, crazy or or madness. The word that they, the, the the terminology that being used is uh, apa, uh it's disorder. All right. And uh, once uh, once they use the word disorder, it means that whoever in the in that particular stage, the, the disorder stage, could not function as a as like an like a normal adult individual. All right. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of. Uh, Uh, what we call is there's, there's a lot of beef uh, when we say about mental health is always related to gila. You know, uh, in the in the Malay culture, gila is only one word, one particular word, and then you know if we translate it from gila, uh, gila to English, it means madness. Yeah, in psychology, in, the, in psychology literature, we don't consider that uh, we don't use the word madness, but we use the word disorder. Okay, ataupun dalam bahasa Melayu kecelaruan, kecelaruan tingkah laku yang mempengaruhi kesihatan 
mental ya yeah? jadi kesihatan mental bukan gila tapi termasuklah kebimbangan worry you know the exam is coming you know the apa you have so much work to be done uh, deadline and then uh, you know you couldn't have a good sleep you know everything went upside down you know everything is so stressful eh? uh, those are mental health okay i've been caught in the jam you know uh, just now we saw nazrul he was he was on his way back to 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 his, to his place you see uh, along the way from from the workplace to his house okay along the way you know caught in the traffic jam those are the things that contribute to mental health okay and uh, that's one of the reason uh, personally uh, i left the clang valley you know i refuse to stay in the clang valley anymore uh, and uh, i'm i'm much much uh, comfortable up north here you know i'm from ampang uh, I, i was born in ipo but then i was raised in and uh, i was raised in ampang and then i went abroad and then uh, yeah i left ampang i left kl you know uh, and now since pkp it's been almost two years i have not been in kl and uh, it's okay it's nice some people might not like it uh, living in the rural area but for my mental health status i think living in the rural area is much better compared to be living in a big city which is so hectic you know okay and uh, we'll come back to the to the question that Fauzana did mention just now about the definition okay art therapy basically is is about expression okay uh, <coughs> uh why do people use art there are a lot of there there there, there are a lot of uh, factors uh, yang menyebabkan ramai orang menggunakan art eh? uh, especially uh, in the western countries yeah especially in in the US in the UK uh, they have come up to uh, you know there's a lot of uh, evidence saying that psychotherapy are no longer the only way uh, the only tool that can be used to help people to cope with mental health issue okay it's not the only one there are other factors there are other approaches one of the approaches would be the art therapy okay art therapy basically it's under the big umbrella okay the word would be expressive art therapy one of the component of expressive art therapy is art therapy it's uh, uh, uh play therapy dance therapy music therapy play therapy clay therapy yeah photo therapy so we have we have all sort of uh, uh the, the art medium which is which which is being used uh, as a, as a tool in art therapy okay so that is based the basic the basic uh, apa uh, kefahaman uh, what is art therapy all about there yeah? it's all about expressing yourself visually when it comes to art therapy if you use the um, uh, uh, music therapy so music became your language okay became the tool to express your inner self so but uh, for for tonight i think we just <coughs> emphasize on the use of uh, art therapy so basically art therapy uh, you know there are people that who are, who are there are a lot of cases they may, i mean hundreds of cases many many cases all over all over the world that uh, just by talking uh, using the conventional approach which is talk therapy or we call it counseling uh, is lo- no longer effective is no longer effective and uh, counselor nowadays especially in the US they are encouraged to have one or more additional modality let's say you're a counselor you're a, you're a conventional counselor you need to do some uh, therapy or music therapy or play therapy or what other kind of therapy so that would complement Okay, that will help the counselors or the therapists to help each individual who came and see with the different uh, ideas, with the different uh, social issues or psychological issues. So there are people who need the verbal talking. Some people say, no, this 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 approach is not applicable to me. I think I prefer to use art rather than talking. You know that kind of thing. So that is the thing that uh, I would like to emphasize. Uh, to the audience tonight eh? and uh, Fauzana did mention what conteng-conteng scribbling scribbling eh conteng-conteng uh, it's a it's 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 one approach uh, whereby uh, sorry uh, oh, sorry like uh, i was saying about uh, apa scribbling just now eh? uh, i think I'll, i'll i'll show some some visual here a little bit of visual okay uh, like this you see these are all scribbling scribbling yeah it doesn't make sense you know it just lines and spots and dots and you know uh playing with colors you know it doesn't have anything to do but but in psychology you know uh, to to an art therapist to an art therapist this sort of image okay this sort of image uh does tell something about the individual okay it could be consciously or it could be subconscious 
not unconsciously. So uh, this is what we call conteng contengan atau we call it scribbling. In in our therapy, there is a technique. They call it scribbling, whereby you can see from the unconscious to the conscious. You can really you can really you know express right from the unconscious to the conscious. So probably it look like you know it look like nothing, but actually to the person who did this, there's a meaning out of it. Which we don't know, you know. Whereby, if you, if we would like to explore, we need to ask this particular person, what does this all, what what is the meaning of all this uh, uh, scribbling? All right. So uh, that is art therapy. And another thing, I would like to emphasize that the myth in art therapy, we don't, you know, you, the myth is that most people will ask me, oh, I don't know how to draw, I don't know how to paint, I don't know how to color. You know, uh, that is the misconception. Yeah. Uh, if in art therapy, it's not about Uh, trying to uh, to get apa mencari keindahan in art yeah in art if you go into fine art yeah most of all the artists all worldwide you know for the, for the past six five thousand years ago you know we have all these prominent world world artists world genius yeah they produce artwork okay those are meant for aesthetic you no know, meant for aesthetic keindahan all right tetapi untuk art therapy tuan-tuan is not about aesthetic we are not trying nak lahirkan pelukis kita bukan nak lahirkan uh, karya yang hebat yang penting lah art therapy is to express your inner self and you can see a product a product like what I said just now it, this, it could be this all right so this is nothing got to do with aesthetic at all it's just an expression all right yeah uh, so this is the the difference between uh, art therapy and uh, art studies It's completely two different areas, all right. So uh, the one you you know we we, we saw or uh, what call it if you if you were to be in a, to be in a museum or you were to, if you were to be in a, in the art gallery, you'll see all kind of painting, all kind of artwork. You know, if you were to be at Balai Seni Lukis Negara, you will see all sort of art, uh, many many kind of art. Those are aesthetic. Those are the expensive one. But then in art therapy. We don't produce in that manner, okay? Uh, and it is not that uh, those those painting are meant to be sell, whereas art therapy or the artwork is not made is it is not meant to gain uh, some profit out of it. No, that is the misconception. Okay, so it's about expressing your inner self, telling what's going on within yourself, your mind. Your heart, you know, and and the, the, the popular word they would they, they would use it in 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 art therapy would be uh, telling without talking, you know, or draw me a story. Oh, that is the concept of art therapy. Yeah, telling without talking, draw me a story. So just like our cartoonist here, uh, Puan Farah, all right? Yes, your 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 cartoon are talking, doing all the talking, doing all the action, doing all, you know, de- delivering all the messages, right? Ah, uh, so that is one of the example whereby in in art therapy, comic is part of uh is a, is a, is is one of the tool uh that w- w- where we can use uh in art therapy, comic. Yes, comic. It is acceptable. It is being proven, and they have they have a lot of studies have shown that. Uh, comic is quite therapeutic. Yes. Another thing before I forget. Yes. Ah, uh, therapy is all about therapeutic. Therapeutic ni maksudnya merawat dan memulih. Kalau kita ada masalah-masalah psikologikal, masalah-masalah gangguan ya, dia boleh merawat. Dan bagaimana dia merawat? Sebenarnya tuan-tuan ya, semasa rawatan tu berlaku, semasa sedang melukis tu, while trying to do the painting, you know, try to do the, you know, the lines, the, the, you know, the, the apa, the splash of colours, you know, the colour selection, and then the with the brush, the brush stroke, and the pen and the ink and all those stuff. Eh? So those are the technique. Those are the technique that really help the Uh, particular individual to help themselves the inner the inner what you call that the inner the inner, the inner self is it all right yes, the, okay. Yeah, okay that's what that's what uh, that is uh, that is the uh, the main uh, features of art therapy okay it's all right bro right okay thank you so much bro terima kasih atas penjelasan jadi uh, Uh, saya akan pas soalan kepentingan seterusnya dan akan kembali kepada Prof untuk jelaskan lebih lanjut tentang art terapi. Jadi baiklah, uh, sekarang penonton kisah mendengar pada pendapat Prof tentang art terapi. Jadi sekarang uh, tiba masa untuk kita dengar pula tentang pendapat daripada seorang artis iaitu Puan Farah yang berada bersama kita pada malam ini. Baiklah Puan, sebagai seorang artis yang begitu giat dalam bidang seni, 
Saya percaya bahawa Puan mempunyai pelbagai pengalaman pahit dan manis. Setengah daripadanya mungkin ada yang menjejaskan kesihatan mental Puan. Jadi, adakah dengan melukis maupun mewarna dapat membantu Puan dari segi kesihatan mental? Or is there any other way that you personally do in order to cope with your mental health besides that? So, what say you Puan Farah? Okay, alright. Uh, thank you for question. Uh, saya uh, setuju macam Prof cakap tadi, uh, drawing dan coloring tu memang membantu dari sudut psikologi. Actually, bila when you draw, when you color things, you express yourself, you jadi someone yang susah nak marah. You akan rasa tenang, you feel relaxed and you have this like a satisfaction once you done your activity and uh, kalau kerja is all about aesthetic like Prof cakap tadi but if it's not for your expression for your own self uh, dia punya satisfaction tu lain macam sikit you cannot describe in words sebenarnya bila tengok you rasa macam ah and anyone yang tengok artwork tu pun will actually get that message because the artwork itself is so clear whatever that you trying to deliver by visual, okay? So, uh, alternative lain, uh, usually kalau untuk saya lah ya, untuk saya uh, sebenarnya besides uh, drawing, coloring, be it traditional ataupun digital, digital macam ni, okay? So, uh, saya usually go for writing, saya akan menulis. Tulis is also a part of express yourself. You can write anything that you want, actually. And you can post it online, you yeah, know, be anonymous and you just write down and people will read and, you know, if there's someone and they will help you or they will just be friends who wish to hear what you have, you have problems, you want someone to share, okay? Okay, usually saya menulis. So, besides saya menulis, saya membaca. Kalau, let's say lah, we feel like we don't want to write anymore or like we feel like um, I think I write enough but I feel empty inside and I want to express myself with something else or find inspiration then reading will be my next option. Lah. So I read a lot of stuff any field I, I read actually tak kisah, anything that inspires me. So for lately I'll go for comics, uh, history Encyclopedia, so anything that that intrigues you, that you feel like this is something new and you want, you feel like you want to read. So read, read is good actually. It sharpens your mind. So at, at the same time, it's a good distraction for you so that you don't feel like you you are so messed up inside. Huh? Okay, that's one. Okay, the next one I will go for entertainment like Netflix. You can go for drama. There's so many dramas lately uh, from all the way Japanese and Korean drama and all the way to US series. Okay. So lately they go for Justice League and then uh, Captain America latest uh, drama series in Disney Plus channel. So you can just pick and choose any dramas and films that you like just to distract yourself from all these uh, problems that you have. Okay. And if you feel like you want to cry, you can always choose a, a good story that can make you cry, actually. It's a good stress reliever also. Okay? So, besides watching Netflix, for me, uh, I'll go for online games, like mobile games or PC games. Do not find uh, games that sounds like so complicated for you. Just for, go for something simple that where you don't have to think so much. You can just play along, you know, like Candy Crush. Um, fish frenzy, uh, like uh, uncle ice cream, local made uh, mobile game, yeah, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then PC games. Uh, in PC games, uh, lately you have this community among girls where you can join and play online games together, and no boys involved. I think boys already have their own group in that naturally online, but for girls, we also have our own online group where you can join up and play online games together. I think this is also good for stress reliever and also good for your mental health because you are actually, uh, during this MCO, you manage to connect 
and socialize with people online. Okay, so in a way, it's a good way for you to release uh, your stress and your problems inside and also a good distraction if you ask me. Okay, and then we have this, um, we use Discord for social online network. Uh, it's not just Facebook. It's not just Facebook. Facebook, uh, if you feel like Facebook is quite toxic, you can always run away in Discord. Discord, we have this group, all girl group, and no boys at all. And we can just share everything that we want. It's a, we call it a safe zone corner. If they have problems, and, and there are so many young girls, including married women inside, all ages. Okay, so this particular group is uh, we not just drawing together, but we also do like uh, life drawing, express ourselves, or just having fun, drawing online, streaming. And then we also like uh, share our personal problems. We trust, we trust one another to share this problem, but we, because we feel like there are some problems that men hardly can understand and <laughs> can cut out. So this one can only be cut out by among us females. So, so I, I think this is quite helpful for me and I'm happy with the group actually. Right. Thank you squad. so much, Mom Farah. Thank you for your sharing and about the games. Yeah, this semua perempuan that's actually new to me. Saya baru tahu saya ada rupanya game. Dan juga ada game yang dibuat daripada our local artist juga. Well, uh, Puan, um, okay. kita kembali kepada Prof Mazan. Baiklah, Prof. Sebelum saya membaca soalan daripada penonton yang telah sign up in Google Form, baiklah, soalan saya kepada Prof. As I myself, as a psychology student, I learned that the traumatic memories are stored in the right hemisphere of the brain, while speech is located in the left and since art ialah daripada otak belah kanan right brain activity so it is easier for those uh, I'm sorry so from right ni jadi dia senang untuk kepada uh, those who suffer from PTSD uh, those from PTSD patients to draw about their trauma rather than talk about it so adakah ia benar dan bolehkah prop ceritakan tentang lebih lanjut tentang mereka yang suffer daripada PTSD dan juga um, art therapy. Ya, yeah, thank you uh, apa Pozana. I think that is a very very good question uh, nowadays uh, especially uh, you know before the word uh, trauma is being used a lot of word uh, like worry uh, you know apprehensive is being used. So uh, what you what you are referring to uh, PTSD uh, and art therapy and to include the brain Uh, we had one in, in, in art therapy, there's a sub-discipline, we call it art therapy and neuroscience. Okay, when, okay, uh, from based on my reading uh, and also, you know, uh, going through the uh, art therapy material, the contemporary art therapy material, uh, when you, when you, someone get involved, try to do some kind of work, okay, an art work, uh, it does not, it's no longer, The, the belief that you know the, the 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 right brain, the left brain, the front cortex, back cortex, the kind of thing, right? Uh, which is uh, they call it as apa ni? Uh, apa dalam apa tu? Uh, otak kanan, otak kiri, the left brain and the right brain, right? So as far I uh, know uh, from my from my reading, that theory is no longer applicable. It's almost obsolete because there are sci- there are studies that have shown that once you commit doing an artwork, the whole brain is being stimulated. It's just not one, the left brain or the right brain or the front brain or the cortex or the hypothalamus, that kind of thing. It is, that is no longer, uh, that is that old school thought. Okay, nowadays we have, studies have discovered by doing art, it does improve your mental health. One of the issue of mental health would be uh, you express their hormone. We have dopamine, we have uh, endorphin. Those are the happy hormones, okay? For those who are suffering from depression, kemurungan, yeah? Kemurungan, yang mana the level of serotonin is so low, by doing art, the level of serotonin akan naik, and the endorphin, the happy hormones pun akan naik, akan naik. So, people, do, you know, those who are depressed, might not be as depressed as they were previously. 
Jadi ini yang orang kena tahu ya. Uh, terapi sekarang ni memang ada kaitan dengan neuroscience. I've got a couple of books, a couple of buku-buku ilmiah contemporary saying that when when we experience PTSD is no longer the brain. It's no longer it's part of the body. It goes into the body. You know each our each each each, uh, each cell in our body in our body we have memory. They have the, the uh, no we have the memory cell they call it yeah. So the body will know how to react and how to uh, not need to react sometimes so it, the, 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 the brain just shut down completely when it comes to trauma especially when uh, I remember I, I, uh, nak kongsi sikit dah when uh, apa uh, tragedy tsunami Aceh well we went to Aceh a month after the after the the the, 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 the incident after the the big earthquake and the and the tsunami yeah and uh, we met a couple of people and uh, there are people who couldn't who couldn't express couldn't they couldn't they couldn't they, they, they became numb apa uh, apa numb apa numb apa uh, numb jadi apa uh, kaku yeah uh, tak boleh nak express disebabkan terlalu terkejut unexpected and then uh, the tsunami berlaku dalam in a large quad scale in a huge scale you know everything changes you know and then uh, these are the things that Uh, that uh, that has been uh, studied by uh, psychologists, neuropsychologists and art therapists eh, uh, trying to relate uh, post-traumatic stress disorder uh, uh, related to uh, art therapy. Yes, by not, uh, since the brain could not express or, uh, you know, uh, it's all being stored in the, in, 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 in the, in, in, in the body. So, it is, uh, no, once you experience uh, PTSD, kita tak dapat nak lafaz dengan lisan. Jadi, bila suka nak lafaz dengan lisan, that's where the art came, comes in. Alright? So, you use a different mode, a different material, a, a different approach, just to get rid of that traumatic event. Because the traumatic event is all in the brain. It's all in the brain, it's affecting the whole system. So, dalam hal-hal ni, tuan-tuan, ya, uh, sedara semua, ya, so art therapy digunakan to dig out, keluarkan balik, bit by bit, bit by bit, bit by bit, all the PTSD uh, hmm. symptoms that is being experienced by an individual. Yeah? Jadi itu memang sangat penting uh, dan dalam sekarang ni ya, memang bila ada orang dah kena uh, apa mengalami PTSD, post traumatic self uh, post traumatic self apa post traumatic stress disorder. Post traumatic <laughs> stress disorder yes. <laughs> You became a different person. There's one concept that I read one in one, one book. You once after you experience a traumatic event, you became uh, there, there is a there's, there's there's a apa ni nama dipanggil post traumatic self. You became a different person selepas mengalami trauma. It changes you completely. Yeah, it changes you completely to different person. Ah uh, ini when those traumatic events are really 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 in a, in in a, in, a, in a large scale in a huge uh, in in a, in a, in a, in, a, in a huge uh, magnitude ya yeah? uh, terlalu besar suka nak diterima suka nak dihadam ya yeah? uh, dari sebabkan itulah dia dipendam dia dipendam dia dipendam and then muncul all the symptoms itu sejuk-sejuk takut-takut the heart to start to beat you know the mind getting apa getting stress out you know uh, so those are the symptoms of PTSD how how are we going to get rid of all that yes one of them is true ah uh, that's the beauty of it that's the beauty of it yeah. all right thank you so much bro for your sharing about the ptsd patient and also art therapy well and now moving on we will now start to answer questions that have been filled in the google form jadi uh, kepada penonton we have received more than 100 questions and i am truly apologize if i couldn't get to ask the speakers to Uh, if I couldn't get to ask speakers all of your questions. Jadi um, soalan ini saya ingin tujukan kepada Puan Farah. Soalan daripada um, those who sign up in Google Form. Uh, soalannya ialah, Can someone with no artistic, artistic talents can be, uh, be good at art? Bolehkah seorang yang uh, tak ada bakat dalam art menjadi uh, ingin berlukis dalam art? Can someone be that? Hello. Okay. Ah yes, Puan Farah. Ah okey, soalan dia tadi boleh tak uh, orang yang tak ada boleh, bakat dalam art. Tak hmm. ada bakat dalam art tapi dia boleh buat art. Actually boleh. Ah uh, you guys kalau you guys semua saya rasa semua orang pernah lukis orang leading. <laughs> okay, uh, 
orang lady sekarang pun ada macam-macam style so itu dikira art juga so sama juga as long as you you draw you can you know contoh daun as long as people can tell itu daun then it's art so it's not about a uh, perfect looking daun pun actually as long as you get the shape right the color is right and you can tell itu art so actually um Persoalan saya uh, untuk adik tu sebenarnya tak ada masalah pun All you need to do is be observant uh, Look around you And then uh, lukis apa yang ada depan mata sebenarnya Start from small stuff Pemadam, pensil Lepas tu dah rasa okay sikit Cuba lukis adik, kakak, abang You know, uh, draw your bedrooms Your houses Your garden, you know All this Uh, actually, it starts from small things and very close to you. Dia, dia kena benda yang relate dengan diri sendiri. Dia kena dekat dengan diri. Ya? Draw benda-benda yang macam ni, kecil. Even cawan yang cute pun lah sebenarnya. Boleh je. <laughs> Alright, thank you for Farah. Saya sambung sikit Farah punya idea boleh apa ni? Boleh, boleh. Okey, yang tadi yang tak pandai melukis tu ya. Memang dalam hmm. dalam arti kita bukan nak cari pelukis. Kita bukan nak lahirkan hmm. Kita bukan nak lahirkan karya yang indah ya. Uh, that is itulah misconception. Salah faham orang. Bila kata buat art therapy, oh saya kena pandai melukis. No. Uh, hmm. Puan Farah tadi bagi tahu tentang orang lidi. ya. Yeah? Orang lidi diterima dalam art therapy. Because it represents something, some, something ke someone ke some event, you know. So this are the thing yang orang kena tahu bahawa don't worry, just express it out, get a, get a book, get a, uh, like a, you know, like a blank page book, you know, that kind of thing. Just express, let it out. Okay, in this term, in psycho, uh, in art therapy, we have this three t- t- terminology. One is art therapy, another one is art as therapy, and another one is art psychotherapy. It's different. Ah, this are the thing, yeah. When it comes to art, art therapy, there must be a counselor, a client, and the art. All right. If you use art as therapy, express it out, let it go, just do whatever you have to do. You like to do it without any help from anyone. You do. You are helping yourself. You're taking care of yourself. Ah, uh, that is art as therapy. Art psychotherapy, yes, it's a it's a professional helping whereby you need to see a, a psychotherapist, and that's where. They use all kind of material, okay, to 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 express whatever is being experienced by the client. So I think this has to be uh, to be clear. Just hold on. Just hold on. I'll get it. Yeah. Okay. Here I've got two resources which I you know I've, I've, which is uh, you know dalam simpatan saya. Yang ini art therapy source book. Right. This is very pure uh, art therapy. Whereas the other one is art as therapy. This is is completely two different things. Okay, can you see? Yeah. So one to do art and therapy, like what what Farah been doing. You don't need counselors. You don't need professionals to help you. You help. You are helping yourself. That's what they call it, art as therapy. All right. Ah, huh? jadi itu yang saya nak bezakan ya. Uh, di kalang itu memang tak pandai melukis dan ok tak pandai melukis ni tuan-tuan sebenarnya ya uh, especially ni minta maaf lah dalam budaya kita ya dalam budaya Melayu kita dalam budaya Melayu kita tak ada ada apa ni tradisi seni lukis we don't have Chinese ada Chinese art ada Japanese art ada Korean art ada Indian art kita Melayu tak ada kita yang ada adalah bahasa persuratan bahasa persuratan kita kita pinjam dulu daripada Arab itu yang adanya tulisan Jawi dah baca Quran sebab when Muslim came Lepas the Muslim came datang, kemudian datangnya uh, 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 British, uh, British yang memperkenalkan Roman semua tulisan-tulisan tu, ha? dan British juga yang me, apa yang memperkenalkan art di sekolah-sekolah uh, pada mereka uh, uh, bila mereka mula menjajah tanah Melayu pada masa itu. Ha? So kita dalam budaya Melayu memang kita tak ada tradisi seni lukis. Kita banyak oral tradition itu sebab dulu ada tahun-tahun 80-an, cakirah 90-an, ya? ramai komplain uh, yang menyatakan 
kan bahawa ya orang Melayu tak membaca orang Melayu tak membaca tak baca ya baca satu buku setahun satu buku dia ada dalam Pustakaan Negara pernah buat kajian ya uh, apa di satu buku uh, uh, warga Malaysia baca satu buku setahun ya uh, itu sebabnya antaranya uh, I remember when I was in the US I mentioned this to my professor and he said how is your oral tradition so saya kata oral tradition memang sangat kuat dalam budaya kita. So disebabkan itu ya, uh, Fazana dengan Farah semua ya, yang penonton semua ya, memang kita dalam budaya Melayu kita tak ada tradisi melukis. Kita tak ada seperti the Chinese art, the Japanese art ya, kita ada Indian art ya, the European ya, ada romanticism, ada 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 surrealist, ada macam-macam itu. We don't have that that kind of apa apa ni uh, art experience in our culture ya, yeah? which is which is okay. Okay, it doesn't mean yet yeah, it doesn't mean good or bad. That's how it is, and it is not only in, in the Malay culture. There are some other culture also who doesn't have their own character. They don't have any tradisi melukis, uh, seperti bila di bila bila uh, Afrika dan budaya budaya yang tertentu. Jadi itu kena ambil kira. Art therapy, art as therapy, art as therapy lah yang akan menolong kita buat sendirian. Let it out, let it go. Don't worry. There's no right. There's no wrong. Just yeah, keluarkan. <laughs> Alright, thank you so much from Baiklah, soalan seterusnya Ada yang bertanya Can you give a few tips of How parents can do art therapy at home with kids? Okay, baiklah uh, Kita semua faham bahawa during pandemic semua uh, Parents mungkin ada yang kerja di rumah Dan juga tak dapat keluar pergi ke office Dan sebagainya Jadi, uh, kepada ibu bapa di luar sana Mereka tinggal bersama anak-anak mereka Jadi, untuk Prof. Mat Zain Bolehkah Prof. kongsikan Any types of art therapy that can be used for parents that uh, towards their children. Okay, yeah. Dalam pandemik ni, everybody is all being confined to a, you know, to, to, to a little space, yeah. Jumpa yang sama-sama semua. So, there actually, uh, bila kata, Farah kata, uh, macam mana parents dapat guna, it's, uh, it's all about, uh, apa ni, apa, we call it in, 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 in uh, therapy would be, uh, apa ni, uh, pergolahan bahan tara. Bahan tara meaning that you can use pencil, you can use crayon, pen, markers, uh, color pencil, uh, uh, hold on. Uh, Prof, I'm sorry, you're mute. <laughs> Prof, you're muted. Okay, ID. Ini set ada uh, pencil color. Alright, this is uh, 12, this is 24, kind of different colors. And I've got like 48 colors. And then I've got for another 48 colors, yeah. Uh, and then yang ini yang besar-besar, Faber Castell, yeah. Uh, this are the material that can be used in art. Yeah, it can be used in art, you see. So I have plenty, I have plenty of stuff. So this are the material that when I get bored, when I get, you know, uh, I just you know, being locked down. So these are the things that became my medium of instruction. Okay? How I express myself. Okay? Yang ini. Okay, another thing I'm going to show you. There are a lot of materials. I have a lot of stuff over here. Sharpie. You know, all those things, right? Just get prepared with all this stuff. Sharpie pen. Color-color, warna-warna, yeah? Uh, ini pun sama. A different kind of pen. I mean, pencil. Okay, and then uh, and also huh, color pencil, your okay? kids to stimulate the the brain, and then uh, basically one of the things kita buat. Okay, there's another one pencil, yeah. So macam-macam boleh guna. Dia punya bahan tara tu anything can you can use anything. Mana mana semalam I give a friend I went to a friend a friend's place. Saya saya beli uh, alat lukis, uh, pencil warna 12 and then dengan the drawing block. So, saya kata bagi. Dan budak-budak tu umur 6 tahun. Bagi dia express. Bagi dia luahkan dengan uh, dengan apa juga bahan material. So, don't be scared. Pencil boleh guna. Pencil colors, you know. And then you have all this Sharpie. Yeah. And then you have all these markers, you know. And then, uh, yes. I've got a bunch of Stabilo highlighter. You know. So, highlighter can be used. So, it's all around us. So you don't need you don't need a studio you don't need you don't need to buy all those expensive material art material to express yourself. It's okay, it's okay. You can do it on loose paper. 
it's okay. You can express anything, anytime, anywhere, whatever you want to express. Okay? So there's no right, there's no wrong. You are free to express yourself. All right? So, All right. you need to be creative. <laughs> ah, the issue is you need to be creative. Creative doesn't mean to produce an excellent work. No. Just to let it out, let it go, using all kind of art material. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, Prof. All right, now moving on to Puan Farah. Baiklah, antara soalan yang saya terima daripada penonton, bolehkah art uh, kurangkan anxiety? Dan apa pendapat Puan Farah? Kalau untuk saya, Art memang boleh kurangkan anxiety. Ah, uh, because uh, benda ni adalah luahan personal, so automatik uh, bermula dengan garisan. Daripada garisan itu menjadikan satu bentuk. Daripada satu bentuk itu dia menja- uh, juga tambah warna untuk dapatkan volume dia. So sampailah ke hasil akhir. So, bila kita sendiri tengok, kita sendiri yang rasa lega sebab dah siap. That's it. It's a self-satisfaction actually. So, yeah. For me. Alright, I see. Thank you, Puan Farah. So, maybe from, maybe, yelah kadang kita tak tahu nak lukis apa. Jadi, we can just take a pencil. So, kita boleh start melukis and since then, kita boleh kurangkan anxiety kita. Okay. Alright. Uh, uh, Farah, you don't mind, ya. Yeah? Uh, kadang yeah. Kita bercakap dengan mm-hmm. telefon, right? Kita cakap dengan telefon, di tangan kanan kita ada pen. And then while we were talking, jari kita berjalan-jalan dekat tepi-tepi suat kabar, dekat majalah-majalah, mm-hmm. right? 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 Uh, that's the unconscious part, itu. Dia dah jadi conscious. Ah, uh, Tengah bercakap-bercakap ni, dia, 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 something ni, something came out. And you look at it, you be amazed what you be doing. You know? Ah, uh, Jadi, dalam hal ni, tuan-tuan, ya, uh, sedara semua, ya, apa saja, don't worry, tak ada betul, tak ada salah. Luah je. Luah dan untuk anxiety tadi, soal anxiety tu eh, memang telah di, dikaji bahawa uh, terapi memang membantu orang menghala, mengalami uh, apa anxiety, kebimbangan, kerisauan, ya, uh, PTSD dan uh, segalalah insomnia, masalah-masalah tingkat ketika laku, substance abuse ya, uh, and then also uh, apa ni, uh, a lot a lot of all the, all the psychological uh, apa uh, human problem that uh, apa, can be can be addressed uh, by using art therapy. It's been proven scientifically. Yeah, there are plenty of books, there are plenty of research that has uh, been conducted, and they have shown result. The saying that, uh, telling that art therapy is very effective in trying to uh, to help people with how to overcome their mental health issues. Okay, that's from me. Yeah. From All me. right. Thank you so much, Bro. Bella. Um, selain tu, saya juga terdapat banyak soalan yang mengatakan how to get the certificate of art therapy and how to become art therapist. Also, before I proceed with that, there is one question. Uh, soalan dia agak panjang. Okay, soalan dia adalah, I am a clinical psychologist and during my practice, I often utilize arts as the method of expression for the patients, especially those in younger age group. My question is, besides the explanation and justification from the patients themselves regarding their artwork, how do we as mental health professionals analyze the artwork and do we need any certificate for that? Thank you. So, that is the question. And apakah pendapat Prof tentang soalan tersebut? Okay. Uh, ini memang ramai tuan-tuan ya. Uh, saya nak tekankan di sini ya. Ramai, um, uh, sekarang ni bidang antarapi sedang mendapat perhatian ramai di di di, di Malaysia ya, di Malaysia. Uh, dan ramai yang nak jadi art therapist ya, yeah, art therapist. Malangnya unfortunately, kita di universiti di IPTA dan juga IPTS di Malaysia tak ada there's no courses uh, tak ada tak ada khusus yang ditawarkan ataupun tak ada uh, ijazah dalam bidang <coughs> art therapy ataupun expressive art therapy we don't have it yet not yet ya yeah? kita belum ada lagi yang ada hanyalah setakat ini sebab saya president Malaysian Expressive Art Therapy Association from time to time we do conduct art therapy workshop today 
art therapy workshop. Normally, we do it in KL. I'm based in Kedah, but then uh, most of the participants are from uh, from the Klang Valley. Okay, so normally uh, we will publish our posters. You know, in fact, last year we 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 wanted to conduct uh, an <coughs> art therapy and coping skill. That was the theme, art therapy and coping skill. But then uh, we we plan it uh, in March. But then it, but then but then PKP came up. So we have to hold on to that idea. But prior to that, if 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 uh, if any one of you who are really interested, go into the Malaysian Expressive Art Therapy Association Facebook or, or Miata, we call it, eh, Miata. Those you have, you will see some posters, yeah, posters art therapy and and uh, psychological healing, uh, art therapy and pain management, art therapy and uh, and mental health, yeah. Uh, those are the workshop that I I conducted. Uh, I conducted with a couple of uh, with others uh, psychology uh, psychologist who are really interested in art. Okay, so di Malaysia memang tak ada discipline art therapy, memang tak ada discipline art therapy uh, pun dah ataupun uh, art therapy degree. Yang ada sekarang ni contohnya saya dah usahakan di UUM. Di UUM there is one course dalam in in, in counselling ya, eh? our our counselling program uh, at UUM counselling program ada one satu kursus art therapy. That is the first in Malaysia. Dan saya baru je kendalikan dia last year. There was the second semester. So the next one, uh, but then uh, this uh, paper on art therapy, it is based on the uh, counseling degree at University Utara Malaysia. Alright, so di Malaysia memang tak ada. The closest yang ada, Singapore. Lasal University. Memang ada. Itu sebabnya apa ni, uh, Pertana dan juga Farah ya, saya terpaksa pergi ke Hong Kong. I went to Hong Kong up and down for five years, flying up and down, uh, trying to get a certificate uh, as an expressive art therapy uh, consultant. I went to New York. The professors from the from the US, he, she came and she tried to con- she she con- she tried to conquer Asia. So I met a lot of uh, other fellow uh, fellow art art enthusiasts, uh, whereby they are so. Uh, Uh, they are so into all the art therapy thing, you know. So uh, we became friends and we established networking. So the, those are the things that 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 happened. That, that's what I created and 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 the things that I did uh, to promote art therapy in Malaysia. Okay. The next question would be on analisa. Okay. A lot of people just not analyze. They not interpret how to get the interpretation. That oh. When you see, when you look at this particular drawing, what does that tell you? How can you inter- you interpret? Okay, this is another misconception of art therapy. Yeah, we don't interpret clients' art. The interpretation should come from the client itself, because in any drawing, for instance, uh, this particular drawing, uh, just just to show a little bit, one example. Okay, like this, for instance. Okay. It's nothing. It's just a piece of artwork. All right, all right. But the meaning of it, it must come from the person who did this particular drawing. All right. So if you sh- if if this particular work to be shown to five different people, all right, you ada lima interpretasi yang berbeza. Five different interpretation. Mana satu nak ikut? Right, so that is another myth of art therapy and interpretation. The interpretation should come from the client itself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so do not interpret because uh, there are some uh, studies, some ideas being 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 shared that misinterpret uh, interpretation is counterproductive. It's counterproductive. You don't. You can. We can only analyze, but not interpret. Interpret should come from the client itself. Because they know better what they did, they know what are the things in there. It might to us, it's just a, it just, it just a piece of, you know, artwork. But then we don't know what's all the detail in there, you know, all the details, right? So these are the things that uh, everyone should know. And uh, it's okay. We are not an art therapist, but we can use art in our psychological work, like what I'm doing right now. You know, I'm not an art therapist. I'm a psych- I'm a social psychologist. Actually, my area, okay. I'm a social psychologist, so I use art in my volunteer work. I'm not an art therapist. I use art in my volunteer work. Uh, by volunteer work would be this, apa ni lah, uh, remaja-remaja mengandung ruang nikah. 
You know, I've been going to this one shelter home. I've been going to the shelter home for the past 15 years, trying to help. Yeah, uh, all this. Uh, kenapa pembuangan bayi berlaku? Ya, buang bayi, bunuh bayi, eh, bakar bayi dibakar, that kind of thing. Yeah, uh, which is so upsetting. So I, was, I had this question: What really happened? What really happened? Apa, apa sebenarnya yang berlaku? Ya, yeah? adik gama salahkan mak, mak bapa salahkan sekolah, sekolah kan salahkan mak bapa, ni kawan-kawan, that kind of thing. So everybody semua berperang dan tak menyelesaikan masalah. So I went dengan with this mission trying to to understand their inner self that it turned out to be yang mengada luar nikah ni semua adalah kesan daripada cinta berahi infatuation yang tak ada komitmen yeah so that's the beauty of art you can always do, you can always do, you don't have to be an art therapist you can be a psychologist using art you can be a counselor using art you could, you could be a comic to help a, a, a comical person try to be a helper. Ah, there's another word, helper. Dalam bantuan menolong. So, bantuan menolong ada, uh, ada counselor, ada jururawat, ada doktor, ada doktor perubatan, ada social worker, ada medical social worker, occupational therapist, yeah. And then we have what, apa lagi, yeah. Uh, uh, Sekaitri, you know, that kind of thing, yeah. Social worker, banyak, banyak area. But these people, they use art in their work. So, it's not necessary to be an art therapist it would be, be lovely to be an art therapist no i if i knew there is a, such a discipline at that time i would have ventured into art therapist i'll be the first Malaysian uh, art therapist but at that time during the 80s when i was growing up uh, there was not much input it's all in america in a, in, in in the western countries so uh, lately when we start you know uh, having facebook and all this internet thing and uh, that's how art therapy is being distributed yeah i mean art therapy is being uh you know uh being all over the, all over the place all over the world okay and then uh Hi. another part would be another interesting part would be if there's any opportunity if you people could attend any kind of workshop or international conference it would be nice no i've been to new york i've been to uh, hong kong to surabaya to bangkok singapore philippine manila philippine eh, just to study art therapy for various instructors Yeah, in art therapy because it is a huge discipline. So don't worry, don't worry. Uh, if you're not an art therapist, you can always use art in your own and your own work with the group that you're working with. All right, thank you so much, Pro, for your sharing and also ah, uh, kongsikan kepada kami tentang your experience. Bella, ah, uh, nampaknya kita kita kesuntukan masa. Jadi ah, uh, untuk Puan Farah, boleh ah, um, before we I end our webinar tonight. Boleh kau pun kongsikan kepada penonton your arts. Mungkin kau ingin uh, kongsikan kepada kami semua your arts, maybe your greatest arts, one of your masterpiece. Dan juga um, boleh kau bagikan um, konklusi uh, tentang webinar. Okay. Uh, untuk art ya. Yeah. Untuk art saya, saya rasa yang baru ni uh, Disney Princess dalam lokal busana di mana satu Malaysia menyambut baik lukisan saya melihat uh, Disney Princess memakai kebarung dan uh, kurung eh. <laughs> dan I think paling istimewa artwork tu adalah apabila uh, kanak-kanak autistik eh, dia dapat tahu setiap watak Disney yang ada dekat tu walaupun dia pakai baju kurung tapi dia boleh tahu Disney Princess tu actually dalam filem mana dia boleh detect. Okay, saya rasa tu biggest achievement untuk saya lah kerana kanak-kanak istimewa dia Disney cartoon mungkin part of uh, life dia yang membesar so jadi dia bila dia tengok dia tetap boleh distinguish benda-benda ni. Okay, so kalau untuk saya konklusi saya rasa uh, art baik digital ataupun tradisional sebenarnya dia adalah satu terapi ekspresi yang baik sebab kita tak ganggu orang dan kita uh, menggunakan waktu untuk diri sendiri untuk meluahkan apa yang kita rasa supaya kita rasa kurang uh, mas- rasa masalah tu uh, macam tu uh, andai kata kita cuba cakap dengan orang pun tak selesai maka uh, alternatif dia adalah dengan melukis dan mewarna macam tu uh, part of express yourself So if you feel like you want to post it on Instagram, go for it, TikTok, go for it sebab ramai je yang buat dan ramai je yang menyokong anda dari belakang sebenarnya. So don't worry lah, jangan risau. Yang support tu tetap ramai. Ha. 
Eh takut tau. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, thank you so much for for okay kepada penonton dengar eh jangan takut. Okay, that's always the first time in everything. Wait, untuk Prof Mazan, uh, what can you conclude to our uh, webinar for tonight? Okay, uh, nak rumuskan apa ni gini. Uh, art is wonderful. Art is beautiful. Art is lovely. So express yourself in art in any form, in any way, any time. You know, uh, and and you will enjoy. Have fun with it. Have fun. Art is about fun. Art is not about something that really, you know, uh, something which is really, really, uh, yang membebankan ya. Uh, lukis, laka, warna, dengar art. So, kita gunakan kongsi art yang besar ya. Uh, dengar lagu, uh, nonton TV, tengok wayang, The Frozen, tengok cerita kartun-kartun semua tu. Uh. Dosa art. Kita hidup dengan art. Kita minum warna, kita pakai warna, kita makan warna, semuanya. Everything is about art and color. So, apa ni, uh, saya rasa dunia menjadi lebih meriah lagi ya uh, kalau kita dapat mencubuhkan diri dalam art ya, kita suka sebab tu ya namun, walau bagaimanapun ini uh, tertakluk lah kepada individu punya taste some people like to draw, some people like to paint, some people don't ya yeah? they prefer something else, which is fine, which is fine find your own avenue, find your own, uh, your own, your own, uh, your own approach uh, yang mana yang selesa yang mana yang senang, mana yang mendatangkan kebahagiaan. But, you must start. Tak boleh cakap je, you have to do it. And then also on top of that, reading is a must. So, online memang banyak Google. Google memang banyak bahan-bahan. Just go, you type the art therapy. Ya. Ha, beribu-ribu. Macam-macam benda boleh buat on art therapy. Ya. Ha, jadi, yang ini tuan-tuan, ha, pada semua, ha, jangan takut, luah je. Luah sahaja. Ya. Ha, tadi ada cakap pasal menulis. Uh, apa ya menulis uh, think Puan Farah cakap pasal menulis a bit writing ah uh, bit writing ah uh. uh, in art therapy we call it as one sub discipline in art therapy they, they call it expressive writing uh, expressive writing ni termasuklah buat puisi poetry poetry kau telah tinggalkan aku aku dalam keadaan begini aku tengah stres aku tengah mencari dahan-dahan yang dahan-dahan yang dahan-dahan yang hijau tapi ini ditemui adalah dahan yang rapuh ya Uh, rumput-rumput yang penuh dengan duri uh, ya langit yang hitam membeku air yang kaku uh, dia kata you terus boleh buat puisi you boleh buat pantun you boleh buat you boleh Malaysian nak kan ya uh, atur untuk diri sendiri so you can express that expression ini adalah untuk semua orang manusia tak kisah kanak-kanak pun ada there's art ada, ada bidang child art therapy untuk kanak-kanak untuk remaja orang tua ada jadi uh, jangan risau jangan takut Let it out, keluarkan, biarkan, let it out and you feel good. You feel good, you feel better and you became a different person. Yeah, slightly. Okay, that's, itulah kata-kata air saya lah, apa Fazana. Yeah? Alright. Okay, okay uh, just saya terima kasih kepada Prof Mazan dan juga Puan Farah kerana sudi meluangkan masa untuk menceritakan tentang pengalaman tersendiri mengenai art therapy. Alright, uh, to everyone, we have come to the end of our program tonight and before we end the program okay banyak soalan jika saya terima bila nak ada workshop art therapy akankah ada workshop art therapy so insyaAllah soon we'll be having a workshop regarding art therapy so follow all of our social medias to get updated and with that being said I would like to apologize to everyone if there are any flaws and weaknesses from me as a moderator throughout the program session. We hope to see you again in the next forum and please follow Young Minds Malaysia's social media for the latest updates. Bye and thank you so much everyone. Thank you Prof Mazza and thank you Puan Farah for your time tonight. Thank you so much everyone.